All right, Northwest Cardboard Gang, today we're going to be talking about investment again. That's right, we've been going away from that a little bit, but today I want to get back into it because that's what this channel is all about, right? Talking about investments and where you should maybe be looking at putting your money to be the most successful. So today we're going to get back into it with three of the four core items in the Pokemon TCG right after this. All right, I'm Andy with Northwest TCG, and if you're just joining the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe, notify, and like. Once again, greatly appreciate you coming, stopping by, and hopefully I can give you some good information to deserve that subscribe. So, today we're going to be talking about three of the four core items. Now, what are the four core items that I'm talking about? Well, Pokemon Center ETBs, regular ETBs, and Pokemon Booster Boxes. Now, the fourth item, some people may argue they're too new to know if they're a core item, but... I'm going to say that they are because I think that they're going to go places. I think they're going to be a great driver when it comes down to your Pokemon investment. So today we're going to be talking about three of them. We're not going to be talking about the six-pack bundles because they're just too new. We don't know how well they're going to perform or if Pokemon's going to continue to do them. But if they do, I could see them being the fourth core item that people should be looking at. Now, when I talk about core items, I'm not talking about tins, V-boxes, any of these side products, because if you look at it, there is a ton of products out there. Pokemon does different things and different drives to try and move product to booster boxes, trying to reduce the cost by putting three-pack bundles out there, trying to increase visibility by putting flashy V-boxes and EX boxes out there, and premium collection boxes, and all these different things that come around. And overall, are they really core investments? Is there a premium collection box for every set? Is there a way to get all the packs you want in every one of these products? No, there's really not. And once again, you could buy a tin today and most people in investment schemes are looking for ways to just break down those products and get those packs out of it because you're after a specific product or pack inside of there to sell or hold for an investment, right? We don't want to be holding on a bunch of cardboard. You don't want to be holding on to a bunch of tin. You really just want the packs inside or you're buying these core investments, which are sealed product investments that have a real good base of people that purchase them, number one, to open, or number two, for their actual collections and sealed product collections that people do have. So today, we're going to be taking a look at three of them, Pokemon Center ETBs, ETBs, and Booster Boxes, and we're going to look at the data, first and foremost, to see which ones have performed the best over the last year or two. We're going to go back two years. We're going to be taking it all the way from Chilling Rain because Chilling Rain is the first actual product or main set that gets the release of a Pokemon Center ETB, ETB, and Booster Box. Now, I'm not going to be doing the holiday sets or the subsets, which is including Celebrations or Pokemon Go. We're not doing them. We're not going into Scarlet and Violet. They're too new. We don't know how well the new, sc new schematics and how the whole layouts are, that whether or not these Pokemon Center ETBs are going to do well, if we're going to get reprints, if we're not going to get reprints. There's just too many unknowns. There's no stability yet in the Scarlet and Violet era to really know how the performance of these are going to be over the near, even the near future. So it's, we're going to leave those out. We're going to go to something that's got at least one year of history on it, which takes us all the way back to Sword and Shield. I know it's hard to believe it's already been a year since the last set of Sword and Shield was released. But we're going to go all the way back. Starting at Chilling Rain, we're going to have Chilling Rain, Evolving Skies, Fusion Strike, Brilliant Stars, Astral Radiance, Lost Origin, of course, ending it off with Silver Tempest. That way we get a full rounded, rounded look at all the different products. Now, the one thing I am going to tell you I'm doing with this, to get the best data and get the most concise, concise data when it comes down to it, is I am taking three different metrics and putting them into this particular viewing. So you're going to be looking at the MSRP price. We're going to be taking the average high. So we're going to take all seven products. We're going to look at the high point of every one of them, and we're going to average it out to give us what the average high was for every Pokemon Center ETB, every ETB, every booster box. So once again, it's going to be an average of all seven of them. It's the easiest way to break down the data to see the overall performance. We're also going to be looking at the average low and using that in the metric to decide whether or not good investments were made and how they've performed based on when you purchase these particular items. So without further ado, let's kick in the first one, which is going to be Pokemon Center ETB. All right, guys, here we are with the Pokemon Center Elite Trainer Box. Now, we got some metrics that we're going to be looking at. Of course, we'll be looking at that high versus MSRP. So what was the high point? If you sold all of seven of these on average on the high point, where would that be? 
it's about $89.59. So if you had picked each one at its high point in the last two years or since its release, you would be seeing about $89.59 on average across all seven of the products. MSRP, of course, buying these right from Pokemon Center for Sword and Shield was $49.99. And that gives us a beginning metric when you look at the high versus the MSRP of about a 79% gain. Guys, in two years, on average, if you sold these at their high points and bought them at MSRP, you didn't even search around. You just went on Pokemon Center and you bought them because you wanted them. What did you get? About a 79% gain. That's 40% per year on average for the oldest ones. That's a great run. That's a fantastic price. If you bought one of each, you'd have a 79% gain. I'd be extremely happy with that without doing any work but just buying them off of Pokemon Center. So, it's a fantastic gain. Once again, Pokemon Center ETVs are doing extremely well. We're going to take a look at the high versus the low. So, let's just say you're the patient investor. Like we talk about, patience is sometimes the way to really be extremely good in this hobby. And you were patient, and you waited, and you watched, and you got each one of these on the secondary market at their lowest points. On average, the low of these particular Pokemon Center ETVs for the seven of them, like I said, once again, I'm going to remind you, it's going through Chilling Rain, Evolving Skies, Fusion Strike, Brilliant Stars, Astro Radiance, Lost Origin, and Silver Tempest. So you got seven of them. Went down to $41.09. So they dropped under MSRP by $9, $8. So you get $8 reduction in the cost, $89 off if you were to purchase these on the open market after the release or after someone else purchased them on Pokemon Center and lost some money selling them on the secondary market. But that's buying them at their low points. What are we looking at when you go from the high to the low? So you get an $89.59 to $41.09. You're looking at 118% gain. So if you were a patient investor, this is where we talk about patience is key when it comes down to investing, not getting caught up in hype and FOMO is definitely going to give you an advantage. Now some sets you would have gotten in trouble with if you didn't buy them at MSRP, but in general, if you would have waited on most of these, you would have done really well. And that is a 118% gain in two years for the oldest products. That's huge. That is a huge number in a supposedly dying Pokemon market. Even that's going through everything that's happened. We are seeing 118% gain. Now, the question is, is that's high to low? I also put in the metric of what happens if we were to go from today's price to the actual low. So if you bought these low at today's pricing, what would you be today if you sold all of them out and you bought them at the lowest price and you sold them out where would you be about 93 percent gains guys 93 is still a great gain even in today's market with pokemon supposedly dying overall you can still sell these with a 93 percent gain out across the board on average that's a fantastic deal overall when it comes down to your investments now how did etbs do compared to this etbs we're going to be talking about those right now all right, guys, here we are with ETBs. Now, a lot of people are probably thinking that they didn't do so hot. Why is that? Well, a big metric changed here in the Sword and Shield era. And instead of booster boxes being the main driving factor for Pokemon production, we actually moved to ETBs. We saw several reprints of ETBs. Even coming down to Evolving Skies, I believe got three or four reprints of ETBs. And booster boxes got left behind. Booster boxes were not the main driving factor when it came down to reprints. Pokemon Center International decided to start selling these ETBs because they were able to be sold at almost all stores, so they had a new reason to print those particular items. So it kind of hampered the overall performance of ETBs in the Sword and Shield era. Comparatively to Sun and Moon, XY, and Black and White, we did not see the gains like we had talked about back in 2021. 2021, we were always on the debate, is it better by ETBs and booster boxes? A lot of people favored ETBs because ETBs in the past and historically through those three eras did extremely well and they gained extremely well due to the fact that they weren't getting reprint after reprint after reprint. It was usually a one and done. They would do one major reprint like we see what's happening with uh, Rebels Clash. Rebels Clash got one, re or one print of ETBs, that was it, and look at the pricing that we're seeing. Even compared to the booster boxes, they are doing extremely well and extremely high comparatively. And that's what we used to see going back in time, going through Sun and Moon, sort of XY, and going back into black and white when they first appeared. So overall, what are we seeing for the actual ETBs in this particular era? Once again, are they doing bad? Are we negative? Are we down? Well, the good news is, is that if you bought these at MSRP, so you went to Walmart and you just bought uh, ETB off the shelf. 
you bought every single one, you bought off the shelf, you just put it away, what would you be at today? Well, if first is the high, if you sold at the high and you went to MSRP, you're looking at an 18% gain. It's a pretty modest gain. That's pretty good, actually, for two years. Once again, you're sitting around that 9% per year. 9 to 10 is typically your standard investment, so you're not doing too bad when it comes down to that investment factor. Overall, for all these new era sets, they're doing extremely well at 18%. That's just buying them at MSRP. You did no work. When they were released, you went to the store and you bought one of each. And this is just one one evolving skies there was two evolving skies this is just one i just took the one of the best perform etbs and just went with it just to see use this so i'm only taking one etb some of these sets like chilling rain and going into um evolving skies both had two etbs so if you would have bought two of each it would change that metric but i stayed with seven just to clarify so it kept it simple but if you would have bought one etb from each era you'd be looking at an 18 percent gain and that was to the highs now, what do we got high versus low? Now, this is where being patient really does pay off, and it shows on this particular number. So you're looking at 18% if you were just bought them off the store shelves, but if you had taken the time and bought these at their lows, because we know that Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike and Astral Radiance and even Brilliant Stars with the amount of reprints that those ETBs got really went down in price, under 30, sub $30 for most of these. Some of them even further. Some of them were down to like $24 for like Chilling Rain and Fusion Strike. Really, stars was like $29, $28. So, if you were patient and bought these at the low points, what would you be looking at? 65% gain, guys. Patience pays off. Just something to keep in mind. That's something I'm going to continue to preach. Being patient is going to reward you with a better gain 90% of the time. Now, if you concentrated on Evolving Skies and you waited, maybe not the same case. But, in general, across the board, if you would be patient and buy these things at the low points and just pick them up as you see them drop in price, you could have a 65% gain overall from high to low. And today, where would we be at today if you were to sell these things? From the low to today, you'd still be looking at about a 52% gain. Once again, not a bad gain overall. Just by being patient and buying at that low point and then selling them in today's market, not bad. I take it. I take it all day long for a two-year investment. Once again, overall for a dying market, these sealed investments are looking extremely well. And they're still doing extremely well as we move forward. Now, will Scarlet and Violet follow these tendencies? Usually they do. Just as long as Pokemon International doesn't change their scheme on how they do things and how they print things and how they release product, these core items usually perform very well, especially ETB booster boxes. Like I said, the big changes we saw was is the amount of reprints we were getting from the Sword and Shield ETBs versus the booster boxes. And we're going to see that as we go into booster box, which since we're there, we might as well do that right now. All right, guys, here we are at the booster boxes. I'll end this and wrap it all up into one big present with a bow. What do we have with booster boxes? Now, booster boxes in the Sword and Shield era became the submissive to the ETBs. That's right. The ETBs became the main driving force. And the booster boxes became the secondary, and they didn't get as many reprints as those ETBs. And in turn, are we seeing that in the data? Are we seeing an advantage to buying a booster box versus an ETB in today's market? So, let's just say you went and bought the ETBs right off of Pokemon Center and MSRP. You bought them for $143.99, and you just sat there with them, and you sold them, today, or sold them at their highs. What would you be looking at for a percentage gain? about 37 and a half percent that's right 37 and a half percent on these booster boxes yes evolving skies is extremely high but in general most of them have been averaging about right around that msrp point once again a lot of them are still for sale on the actual site on pokemon or pokemon center so that really does kind of put that cap where they could never really get past that msrp even though they were trying to get through it but once again that is there. The high, the average high for all the booster boxes currently is $198.05. So that's your average if you would have sold them at the high. Because Brilliant Stars was at 180 at one point. Lost Origins was at 165 at one point. You know, even Chilling Rain hit 153 at one point. So if you would have sold them at the highs, there's some really good value in booster boxes, even getting past that MSRP point and giving that advantage of the 37% versus 18% on the ETBs. Due to the amount of reprints we saw of ETBs. And what would happen if you would have just waited on those booster boxes and purchased each one as they dropped the price and as we saw those lows? 
Well, the average low for booster boxes was about $93.59. So once again, between the seven products, we're looking at $93.59. What do we have that versus the high? Well, if you were to compare that to the high, to the low, you're looking at 112% gains on these booster boxes, which almost takes you right up to the Pokemon Center ETVs. You're only a few percentage points short comparatively, comparatively to those. And they're supposedly the exclusive item. So, once again, it gives you a little bit of a perspective on how not having multiple and tons of reprints on booster boxes really changed the dynamic of how they performed on the actual market and for investments. Now, if you were to sell them today, that's the big question is, where would you be today if you were to sell these right now in the open market? Well, you'd be still sitting at about 82%. So 82% on booster boxes, we did get that. Silver Tempest, Lost Origin reprint, and that really did kind of reduce the pricing and bring that average down quite a bit, but still 82% in two years, I'm not complaining. Once again, it's a fantastic layout. It's a fantastic way to look at your investments and see in the core investments between these three particular ones, which ones are performing better than in all the others. So once again, great performance. Looks awesome. Guys, in a dying market in Pokemon, we're still seeing these kind of percentage gains. In the data even today selling them from the low to where you would have sold them in the end of the market as of today if you needed to sell them on average you're still seeing about 82 percent that's a great markup that's a great investment that's working out really well in your favors even in today's market now all right guys so in conclusion to take a look at this when we're looking at the best investments to be looking at from the sword and shield and using that historical data to build a direction when you're going into the future Currently, the Pokemon Center ETBs and the booster boxes are both performing extremely well. They're doing really well comparatively. If you buy an MSRP, of course, booster boxes are always extremely expensive at MSRP. Most people don't buy them at MSRP. You're not buying Scarlet and Violet ones at MSRP either. They're dropping down to like the lows of Sword and Shield. So we're seeing like $79 booster boxes. Of base set we're seeing you know $80 booster boxes of Paldea Evolved and we're seeing $80 booster boxes of Obsidian Flame and probably less if you were to look you'd probably even find them lower than that so once again there's some really good buying opportunities to get those low points on those booster boxes and when they start to move there's that gives you that bigger percentage game once again that's where patience really pays off and you're really seeing it when you're looking at the MSRP to the low how much of a difference that that makes on your percentage game. You go from 37% if you bought a booster box and MSRP off Pokemon Center to 112% just because you waited it out and bought them at their low points. You know, that's just a gigantic gain. That's a big difference when it comes down to it. And it really does show that patience is the key to your Pokemon investments. How do you make money in Pokemon is being patient and buying at those low points. And yeah, even if you lost the bigger gainer on these, and you missed evolving skies it's still you buy them low and you sell them high you're still seeing great movements in those particular things maybe should have done that maybe what i'll do is i'll put that in the community if you lost evolving skies out of all this what would your performance still look at because it'd be interesting to look at without that big gainer inside of there how the rest of them would look and i don't think it's going to be as bad as you think i don't think that the booster boxes are going to be above msrp on average just because you have booster boxes such as you know a lot of like uh, Silver Tempest, Lost Origins, and Astro Radiance are still well below MSRP, and the other ones are kind of capped. Uh, that's going to be a big factor when it comes down to it. If they can't get, if you can buy them on Pokemon Center for $143.99, why would you pay $160 or above that for those particular items? So we could do it. We could see what they are. I might put the data up in the community here just to see what it looks like without that particular part in it. But hopefully, this is some good data. Hopefully, this tells you that number one, the Pokemon market is still doing really well. Here we are, you know, one year removed from Sword and Shield, and we're still seeing some really good gains on those in just two years. But it also shows you which products do the best. You got an exclusive, exclusive Pokemon Center Elite Trainer Box that's performing this way, and you have booster boxes, which are not an exclusive. Those are printed pretty regularly, comparatively, supposedly are actually performing darn near the same price. So it gives you a direction that these two particular items are extremely good, while ETBs are slacking just because of the reprints that we saw on those last few sets. Once again, the data is just great. You get to be able to see this. From now we're going to start working into maybe some top five investments that we need to be looking at when it comes down to Pokemon right now. 
you know, what are some top five steel products you should be jumping on currently today to uh, take a look at it as we close out the year. Once again, thank you guys, everybody, for watching. If this was some good information and you do enjoy these data sets, be sure you hit that like button. If I did get you this far in the video, I hope I earned your subscription if you're not subscribed to the channel. So be sure you hit that subscribe to help me out. Also, hit that share button. If you know some people are looking for that data or you're arguing with someone about the Pokemon Center versus Booster Box versus ETB, well, here's the numbers for you to have your battle finished. You could take a look at it to see how the performances are. And say, yeah, you were right, the Pokemon Center ETB was the better one. Or, see, the booster boxes aren't that far off. Or, the ETBs, yeah, they didn't do so well comparatively to the other two. But once again, this is just data set, guy. You can see where we're looking at. You can see how they're performing. And you can make the decisions based on that to see if this continues into Scarlet and Violet. Maybe you want to put a little bit more money into them, Pokemon Center ETBs, if you can catch them. They're harder to catch in Scarlet and Violet. Maybe that means you go to the booster boxes because the booster boxes have performed really well in Sword and Shield, but it gives you that direction and that idea on where to go. Once again, guys, hopefully some good information. Be sure you hit that like button before you leave. Check out the two videos at the end. We'll see you next time here on Northwest TCG.